Hey all, welcome back. Now I've got the garage tidy, I've got no more excuses left. No, I should probably really get on with this. I've got a wiring order that I'm putting together, that should be here in a week or two. In the meantime, I've got plenty I can be getting on with, just working on the components I've already got. These switches for example. That's not supposed to stick down like that. It's supposed to spring back up. And this just feels weird and mushy. So I think they both need cleaning. Pretty sure that's not supposed to be out here either. So first off, let's take these out. So the steering wheel has to come off first. Even though I just put this on temporarily, it still needed a bit of persuasion to come off. Then the switches slide off the column. There's supposed to be a screw clamping it in place, but I hadn't bothered to tighten that up before. This is going to be coming back out anyway, so no big deal. Back in the warmth and on the workbench, I could take a proper look. First job was to separate the switches. I'll start with the wiper switch. There's not really a lot to it, although it's interesting to see the wirings being patched up and soldered together before. In fact, it broke again as I was playing with it. I figured it was sticking because it needed a bit of cleaning up and maybe some grease here and there, so I pulled the switch apart. I have to say, it didn't look too bad. So I repaired the broken wire first. I didn't think I had enough wire there for a decent crimp connection, so I went with the solder joint. I kind of messed up the heat shrink here and it shrunk from the soldering iron before I could get it in place, so I had to make do with some electrical tape. Not pretty, but it'll do the job. And then I cleaned up the contacts. And put it back together. just to find it still wasn't working properly. So I did a bit of research and it turns out I'm actually missing a spring. It's supposed to go under there, that's what pulls the arm back. And it hooks around these contacts here. It wasn't there when I took it apart either, so apparently it's always been missing. Looks like someone's been here before. Rather than spend the £60 on a new switch, I thought I'd just try and make a new spring. I've got a bunch of springs, so hopefully I should be able to bend one to fit. So yeah, that didn't work great. I had a few attempts, but I couldn't make it work. Mostly because I can't see exactly what I'm supposed to be making. This was my best attempt, and it's crap. Not only that, but somehow I managed to lose the little pin that goes in the end here. So I got my credit card out and spent the £30 on a switch for a mini. It's exactly the same switch, it just has a different connector and costs half as much. Comparing the two, this one's a pretty decent copy. The markings aren't edged like the old one is, but otherwise it's basically the same. It would be easy enough to cut this plug off and repin the wires for the TR7 plug, or even just splice the wires in. But to keep things original, I decided to just take the missing bits out of here and put them into my old switch. It 
It's a bit fiddly to fit the spring, but nothing too bad. And that's where it all went wrong. As I turned the switch over, I realised the wire had broken again. This time it was right next to the pin. Okay, here's where I give up. So I took it apart, again. And reassembled the new switch. I tried, but apparently this wasn't meant to be. So, time for the indicator switch next. Hopefully I'll have better luck here. There's a bit more to this switch, but it's still not exactly complicated. But as I suspected, it was pretty grimy inside. I don't know if this was already broken, or it broke as I was pulling it apart, but this wire here was broken off. It goes up the stalk to the horn switch, and apparently is just clamped in by the stalk itself. So, I pulled the stalk out of the mounting, Cleaned up the wire, and pushed it all back together. And that all works fine again. Now it's time to look at that loose wire. I thought it was just a pin that had come unplugged, but it's actually broken off from the metal plate. I figured the best fix would be to solder it back on, and then just run a nail or something through the middle for some extra strength. And then it was just a case of putting it all back together. Fiddly again, but fairly straightforward.
And that's the stalk switches done. I figured the dash switches could do with a quick clean up as well. I started with a heated window switch. And then I realised it was riveted together, so I decided to leave it. It's not exactly a critical component, so if it doesn't work at any point down the line, I'll deal with it then rather than trying to break it apart now. It feels like it'll work okay anyway. So now for the hazard light switch. This looks like you can just unclip the ends here. Pop off the lever. And yeah, that's pretty bad. Definitely need to clean that. I cleaned all the gunk with some brake cleaner. And then just polished the contacts with a bit of Brasso. They came up great. There's a couple of spring detents inside the lever, so I cleaned up the old grease and gave them a tiny dab of fresh grease. And then it all went back together. This one's got a broken casing, but it works just fine anyway, so I'll leave it. And that's all done and ready to fit. Headlight switch next. I know these are prone to getting burned out, so I want to make sure this is one's good and clean. It's the same layout as the hazard switch, and easy enough to take apart. And this actually looks okay. I guess this must have been replaced at some point before I got the car. That would explain why it was fitted upside down the whole time. So I just gave the contacts a quick clean up and put it all back together. Time for the front lights now. I did the rears years ago, but these need some tidying up. I know one of the lights doesn't work, but that might just be a bulb. So the lens comes off first. Looks like some old bumper restore stuff got on the lights. That should be easy enough to clean up. Then the gaskets come off. This connection isn't working for some reason. It's slightly just dirty contacts. That tends to be what causes like 90% of electrical problems on these old cars. So 
So I took the time to clean all these up. The silver coating was starting to peel up, so I rubbed it all back. And then primed it ready for paint. And then I gave the outside a clean while I was at it. You can see a bit of overspray on there from a long ago paint job. That mostly came off with a bit of scrubbing though. And then I cleaned up the lens. Whatever that black stuff was mostly came off with a bit of scrubbing, but I had to scrape some of it off. I was planning to use some Chrome FX spray paint on the reflectors here. I did that on the back and it worked out well. But when I tried to use the can that I had in the workshop, nothing would come out. So I thought I'd try something different here. A bit of glue first. And then some tin foil. This is quite fiddly and a bit messy. I needed to do this in a couple of stages, but even then it ended up creased. But once the lens is on, it looks fine. Rather than just leaving the edges in primer, I sprayed on a bit of silver paint to finish it off. I gave the back a quick bit of paint too, not that anyone will ever see it. And that's done. A bit cleaner and tidier than it was before, and all the connections are good now. I did the other one off camera, and now they're good to go. I need some new gaskets, but I'll just add those to my next order. Horns are up next. These are looking pretty ropey, and one of them doesn't work. Rather than trying to restore them, I just bought some new ones. The brackets are different, but that's not a problem. I can just clean up and reuse the old ones. So I'll take off the old brackets. Then clean off the worst of the rust with a wire wheel. They came up pretty well, but there's a few bits I can't get to with the wheel. Sometimes I like to use fancy methods for rust removal like electrolysis, but today I'll keep things simple and I'll just use good old fashioned vinegar. I'll do the bolts as well, why not? After a few hours, they came out great, so I'll just rinse these off before they start rusting again. Before I paint them, I should probably straighten them out, but they both seem to be bent in very much the same way. Are they meant to be bent like this? If anyone knows, drop me a comment. Too late though, I'll straighten them out anyway. And once straight, they got primed and painted. Okay, so I've got these all painted up now. So they're all nice and shiny-ish. So now I'm ready to fit the horns. I'm just having a look at these horns though, and I've noticed a couple of things. First of all, the old horn only had one terminal. Looks like the earth used to go through this and through to the body that way, which is fine. This one has two, so 
what I might do is just ignore that part of it and I'll just run a tail to the regular earth point and I don't have to worry about this being conductive. Secondly, it's the wrong way around. If that goes on the bracket like that, it's going to be quite hard to get to these. And thirdly, if the horn goes on like that, water will come up and it's just going to sit on there. I don't know how waterproof that is. But I think I can probably take this off, flip it around, and that will solve that issue. And then for the waterproofing, well, let's just see what's inside there. Luckily I don't worry about things like warranties too much. Yeah, I think I can just mount that back in like that. Doesn't look like there's too much here that can go rusty or go wrong. So, I'll leave that for now. Just make sure that still works. And then I'll get these brackets on and fit it into the car. This is one of those jobs where there's no dignified way to do it. You need one arm under the car to hold the horn and one above to screw it in. So you just have to sort of plug the car. So that's it for this episode, but apart from the start motor and alternator, you know, minor stuff, that's pretty much all the electrics ready to go now. I've got a big wiring order on the way as I record this, so next episode I'll be able to start wiring all this together. Exciting times. I know there's not been a lot of progress since the last episode, but my time's been taken up by a lot of other stuff. Even my spare time's been taken up with another project or two, which you'll be seeing on this channel in the next week or so. But don't worry, TR7 Project is definitely back underway now. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next episode. If you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it if you liked and subscribed. It really helps me and it helps move the channel along, so if you could, I'd appreciate it. But otherwise, I'm getting back into the warmth now, so I'll catch you on the next one. See ya!